Welcome to the first video of the series for those who are starting their adventure with digital electronics and may need some help with understanding how the most basic digital devices work. Before we start, let me kindly ask you to help in creating this channel. If you find these videos interesting or useful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Thank you for your support. We will go through the most commonly used logic gates, latches, decoders, counters and other components using the well-known 7400 series of integrated circuits. It is a series of bite-sized videos, each about one logic device or a group of similar devices, which we will see in action on a breadboard and explain how they work. It is mainly aimed at beginners, but some general knowledge about electronics is assumed. In this first introductory part, we will talk about what 7400 chips are and about differences between their multiple families. 7400s are also called TTL, transistor transistor logic, because the first original family of those chips, introduced in the 1960s, was built using bipolar or BJT transistors. 7400 integrated circuits are basic blocks of digital electronics often used as a gluing parts between more complex chips. Each device has a designated number which follows two digits 7 and 4, hence the name of the series. The number is most often two or three digits long, for example 7404 or 74373. Additionally, one or more letters can appear between the 74 part and the piece number, which show which family the device belongs to. The lack of letters means that the chip belongs to the original family, but you probably wouldn't easily have found one of those for at least 30 years, as they became deprecated by newer designs. I have got a few of those, so have a look. It's a rare sight these days. As you may be able to see, these particular ones were manufactured in the 1970s. We will mainly focus on a few most popular families, which you may come across and use most often. The most single important difference between those is what technology was used to manufacture them. Those with no letters after the 74 and those which don't have the letter C are built using BJT or bipolar transistors. Those with the letter C, among others, are built in the CMOS technology using the FET or field effect transistors. The bipolar ones are rarely used these days, but still produced and available to purchase. You may find them, mostly the LS family, in literally every single retro microcomputer from the 1980s. The most common families currently used are the HC and HCT. Here is the summary of the differences of the most known families. The first group, the TTL or bipolar families, have many drawbacks which is a good reason to not use them anymore. They have a huge current consumption and poor output voltage levels for both binary states, the 0 and the 1. For those new to digital electronics, or as a reminder, the binary zero is represented by a voltage close to the common level called the ground, usually connected to the negative side of the power supply. In contrast, the binary one produces a voltage level close to the positive side of the power supply, usually called the VCC. The original TTL logic was designed to be used only with a 5 volt power supply. The current CMOS versions also work with 5 volts, but their working range is wider. Specifically, they also work with 3.3 volt, which is more dominant in digital electronics these days. So, let's return from this digression. In this bipolar group, the TTL, we have the original family with no letters after the 74, which are the slowest and consuming the most current of all. There is the F version, which is supposed to be faster. Then we have the S family, which switches even faster, so it can be used with higher frequencies, and the L family, which draws less current. The currently most popular version of the bipolar group is the LS, which is the best of both the L and the S. The second group are the CMOS families. 
There was the original one, the C family, which I honestly never have come across. Then we have both the HC and HCT, which are currently the most popular 7400 families, and the AC and ACT, which are the faster versions of those. The T in the name is quite important when you mix them with the old TTL logic. As I mentioned a few moments ago, the TTL devices have their output voltage levels different from the CMOS devices. We will see and compare them in a second. Because of those differences, the inputs of these chips with no T in their name cannot be driven by the TTL outputs. That's why we have the T versions, because they are compatible with the TTL and understand their output levels. For our tests, we will use the 7400, which contains four two-input NAND gates. If this doesn't tell you much at the moment, don't worry. We will cover this chip in the next video in more detail. For now, just remember that when we join and drive the two inputs of this gate together, we always get the opposite logic state on the output. For example, when we connect them to the ground or logic 0, we get logic 1 on the output. When we set inputs to 1, we get 0 on the output. So let's start our testing with the original 7400 family, which is the oldest one. But first, let me explain uh, what you can see on this breadboard. Uh, in most of the chips uh, of this series, 7400 chips, most but not all, so always check the data sheet. Um, they are supplied with, from the two opposite pins, so the right bottom pin uh, is usually the ground, which I just connected to the minus, and the top left opposite uh, is the plus 5 volt VCC. Uh, by the way, uh, as in all DIP packages, you count uh, pins anti-clockwise, starting from the, from the left bottom, uh, looking at this notch, which you can see on the left-hand side of the chip. So we have pin 1 to 7, then 8 to 14. This is 14-pin uh, chip. There are, uh, there are of course, uh, larger than that, but um, usually uh, the, the right bottom is the ground and the top left is the VCC. What you can also see are these little connections. Uh, so I connected all four NAND gates uh, in kind of serial uh, order one after another. So the output of the first one drives two inputs of the second one. Uh, the output of the second one goes around the chip and uh, drives the inputs of the third one and so on uh, up to the fourth one where the fourth output is just here at uh, pin 8. And the inputs of the first one I connected to the VCC, which uh, means that they will receive a logical uh, level of 1. And as you remember, I just mentioned it a few seconds ago, uh, if you drive both inputs with 1, the NAND gate will give you 0 at output, and so on. So if the second gate is driven from the first one with zero at the input, the output we expect it to be one and so on. Let's now try to measure the voltages of the both zero and one level. To do that, I'm just connecting these to the power supply, which is around plus five volts. Let's check uh, the voltage. So I already connected the ground to the multimeter here. Now let's check the, the power supply voltage. As you can see, it's quite close to 5 volts. Um, it is 5.08. Now let's see, as I said, this should be one at the first gate's inputs. So the output should give us logical zero, which is which should be quite close to zero volts, but let's see, it's not bad. It's like 0 0.14 volts, so it's quite good. But let's see now what's the level of a logical one on these chips. Just to remind you, this is the original 7400 family. So let's see now uh, what's the voltage of logical one at the output of the second gate. It is quite close to 3.9 volts.
well, it's far from uh, 5 volts, and that's what I was um, trying to explain before. These TTL or bipolar transistors logic don't give you logical one which is very close to 5 volts. The next one is still this old uh, TTL B uh, bipolar uh, technology version uh, of the 7400s which is 74L00. It's supposed to consume less power, but now we're just measuring the voltages. So um, let me disconnect the power supply and replace this chip with the L version. And reconnect the power. Let's see. Uh, they should be uh, similar, but let's check. So output of the first gate, which is uh, in uh, logical state of zero. Oh, that's much better. It's just uh, 0 0.05. And the previous one uh, gave us 0 0.14. And the logical one at the output of the second gate, that's exactly the same 3.9 as previously. Okay, let's swap the chips again. This time we're going to use the LS version. This version is still available to purchase, uh, as I mentioned, and it should draw uh, less power as the L version and also be faster than the original one. Uh, but currently we're just checking the voltage levels. That's our 74LS00. Power up and again. Voltage of logical zero is very similar to the original one, 0 0.14. And logical one, oh, that's much better uh, actually than the original one. It's 4.46. And now finally, uh, the CMOS version of that chip. Uh, in this case, I'm using 74HCT00. So yeah, let's put it in our breadboard and power it up again. Now let's see what's the uh, level of the logical zero on this chip. Look at that. It's zero up to a millivolt. And now logical one, 5.07 while let's double check the power supply voltage it's it is 5.07 it's exactly at the vcc level as well as logical zero is exactly at zero level so now uh, i changed slightly our setup instead of this jumper over here which supplied the chip now um, i uh, connect my multimeter to check how much current each of the chips draws. We've got the original 7400 chip now uh, currently on the breadboard and we uh, we can see it's quite a large power consumption as for just four NAND gates, four simple blocks of logic. 8.78 milliamp. Now let's turn it off and switch it to the L version, the L version uh, should draw less current than the original one. Let's check it up. This is 74L00. And look at that. It's only uh, 0 0.78 milliamp, so it's uh, 10 times less. They didn't lie, saying that the L version um, draws less current. Okay, let's switch it to the LS version. Should be similar, but the the LS version is faster, so it can work with uh, higher frequencies. It can switch faster. Let's put the power on. Well, uh, it's more than the L version, but much less, much less than um, the original one. It's 1.88. Okay, the last one, the CMOS version, 74HCT00. Now that, I expect, is going to be a huge difference. Okay, that's HCT in, power up. 
No, my multimeter is okay. I just need to switch the range. Still, still nothing. It's not possible to measure the current with my multimeter. It's less than one tenth of microamp, which is less than 100 nanoamps. To sum up, if you create a new design, use the HC or HCT chips. But if you replace a chip in an old device, like a retro microcomputer, use an alike version, probably the LS, which is still available to purchase. I will almost exclusively use the HCT in my videos, like I already have in the Intel 8088 breadboard computer series. In the next bite-sized video in this series, we will see how the basic logic gates work. Again, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. This is crucial for its existence. Thank you for that and I'll see you next time.